Hello, welcome to my review and unboxing of the Spark model, 43rd scale Mazda 787B from 1991. It's the Le Mans 24 hour winner, the first time a Japanese manufacturer's car won at Le Mans. And it's the uh, number 55, which you may well recognise. Uh, now, I'm going to put this in a playlist with a couple of other 787 videos, so do look for that. Um, anyway, um, this is still in the wrapper. I've managed to buy it brand new, and bear in mind we're now in March 2021, so I was quite pleased to get hold of this. Um, in a lot of places it's very expensive, over £100, easily over $100. Um, but I got this for £65, which isn't bad, which is around... I guess eighty dollars. I'm not really sure. Anyway, so map the Le Mans circuit on the back and um, information on the model there, and more on the back holograms. So that's a 24-hour Le Mans hologram. Okay. So as you can see, it's still in the wrapper, um, brand new. Let's see if I can undo this. Cellar tape off the cellophane without breaking anything. I can hear the tape coming up, which bodes quite well. I mean, I don't. <laughs> I am one for taking the cars out of my wrappers. I can't just leave them there. I have to be able to see them. I take them out of the boxes and I put them in my display cabinet without the boxes on. That's what I like to do. Uh, and. I just have to not worry about the slight drop in value. There we go. But that makes the wrapper potentially rescuable. I don't know if it's possible really, but um, I should now be able to slip it out of the wrapper. But then I'll have to store the wrapper somewhere <laughs> and label the wrapper if I want. And the chance of really being able to get it back in there. I don't know, might be possible. <clears throat> okay, put that to one side. Right, okay, so now we've got a better view again of the uh, the box. Splendid. Okay, so, it's, uh, oh, okay, we can't just push it out of the box. We have to take it out. All right, oh, man, this is going to be, oh no, here we go. Okay, so it hasn't got caught, which is great. We can just pull it out by the edges without damaging the box, which is great. Fold it back. Lots of Spark models second hand have this bit here. Of course, you, most of them don't have this flap, end flap, so you've got this which is quite vulnerable and they tend to get uh, mashed up a little bit. So I am carefully folding these back so they fold in the correct way and I'm sliding that out. <coughs> so normally with Spark models, you have a, just the back piece, not the sides there, and that's often more reflective silver. I'm going to put that back for now, and we're now at the next stage where we now have the next uh, the next um, barrier. So I'm going to go for this end here and see if I can lift that up with my Victorinox Swiss card knife. And that seems to be going quite well and keep that back out of the way without folding it all the way back <coughs> and then make sure you're opening it like that because you've got the corresponding sticker at this end and I'm going to pull that sticker off the lid again and leave it on the base again okay right so now bear in mind this is not the cheap Spark Hatchet as they seem to be branded. Um, these are not the cheap version which you can get for 15 quid off eBay or wherever. And the way you can tell one is the radio aerials there. Can you see them? They're fine. They're not thick. And um, I don't know how much of the other detail is different, but um, right, looking at this, we've certainly got good detail. 
I'm going to compare this with my Q model 787 from I think it's a 1990 maybe the year before this um, maybe it's an 89 I'll be able to tell you which also has a lot of detail it's <clears throat> one of my favorite 43rd scale cars in my collection because there's plenty of detail on it so anyway that will be a separate video I do love these rear wheels on these cars um, you can look at my video of the 12th scale TSM model uh, car to see what that is. I think it, I can't remember if it's OZ or something and I really can't see into there very well. I'm sure I've got a magnifying glass here somewhere. Alright, so my old uh, <laughs> from when I was a kid magnifying glass that I was given and here we have, can I read that? Oh, no, it's too small and I've got magnifying reading glasses on. No, give up on that one. So, anyway, obviously this um, this is quite the colour scheme to be printing onto the car. Um, you know, it's a famous, obviously a famous colour scheme. Um, if we look into the car there, you can see the seatbelt detail inside. Um, and you've got various bits of dashboard detail there. Let's see what we can see. If I put my hand there, we might get some more. Yeah, more detail in there. Is that the steering wheel that's a red colour? So, as with most Le Mans cars, it's right hand drive because the circuit is a right-handed or clockwise circuit and you want to put the driver toward the in inboard inside of the circuit to help the weight distribution distribution around corners um, got the printing on the top obviously driven by Johnny Herbert Bertrand Bertrand Gasho and V Viedler I can't remember what Mr Viedler's first name is or was anyway um, no, very happy with this model. I am about to take it off the plinth, so do watch for that bit. What's maybe slightly unrealistic at the moment is this skirt, this um, pale brown gold coloured skirt. Seems to be sticking out too far, I would say. I don't know why. I mean, obviously that's the ground effect stuff, so talking of ground effect, we can look at the um, detail at the back there, the Venturi. You can see all the way down through the middle. Okay, well, let's see if we can take this off. So I'm going to hold it in such a way where I'm not damaging the rearview mirrors or the aerials on the roof, and making sure my force is going against the plinth, not against the car. And almost there. Oof. Great. Okay, let's put that out of the way, so we've got a very much a standard fit. And you'll notice this um, designation is on both sides. Oh no, so we've got the drivers on one side, and we've got the car and the race on the other side. Okay, so notice this is a brand new model, and I've just got it out of its wrapper, and there's some moisture on the base. Mm, slightly weird, but maybe it was hot and humid in wherever this was made, your guess. I'll let you guess, I'm not going to start bandying place names around. Now I was just talking about that skirting around the edge there and I just think, feel it comes out too far. So, um, no, not quite right perhaps. Let's um, maybe zoom this in to get some of the detail. Bit better, yeah, not bad. Okay, look at that, very good, very happy, very happy. And I think this is one of the prettiest Group C cars full stop because it's 
quite petite when you see them in the flesh. I was privileged to see one race at Brands Hatch in the UK, the one that I've got the Q model of, and they are small cars because of course the rotary engines are traditionally small because you're getting, for one rotor, you're getting three firings per revolution of the crankshaft, plus they rev to very high revs, so you've got a very compact power unit, and I believe this was a three rotor engine, so um, that means you had uh, nine firings, combustions, per crankshaft revolution for a very short engine. Um, anyway, very happy with this, I'm, I've been watching out for one of these for ages, and I don't know how come it came up cheaply brand new from minimodelshop.com which is a eBay, uh, it's a die, not eBay, diecast model shop in the UK so uh, yeah very happy with that so do um, do hold on and uh, <coughs> look at my um, other videos there's more detail down in there that I'm going to try to show you, actually, because um, we've got the seat belt detail. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so, um, I'm going to make a, um, playlist uh, with seven, eight, seven videos, model car uh, videos, and uh, there'll be about five videos in there I guess by the end of the day. I'm going to compare this with the Q model that I have of the, it's either the previous year or the previous year to that, it's a white coloured car. And I will also do a comparison between the detail on this and my 12th scale true scale models, TSM uh, resin car, this is obviously resin as well um, so uh, yeah, yeah. do subscribe to the channel for more model car reviews there's plenty on there right now uh, a lot of 43rds, some 12ths uh, Ferrari 288 GTO, Tamiya 12th scale um, so yeah, do do please do that. And if you're into buying these things and you like to use eBay, maybe you're an expert on eBay, do go to buynowsearch.com and you can store your searches in there and it will it'll email you with the result of any newly listed um, fixed price items You know, within a couple of minutes of the item being listed so you can get on and... Um, purchase that item before someone else gets to it. Okay, thanks a lot. Do uh, comment below if you're interested and uh, we'll, uh, you'll hear from me another time.